I don't think I'll ever forget the day that I walked into a FedEx shipping center to pick up a cardboard box with a human skull inside of it. It's not a sentence that a lot of people get to say in their lifetimes. The clerk just handed me the box across the counter and it was nothing special, just signed here. And I took the package, jumped in my truck and had a human skull along with me for the, the ride to the lab. When I opened it up in the lab, it was bubble wrapped and everything and I had a human skull there with me in the room. Now I had worked with cadavers, of course, in medical school doing anatomy and physiology courses, but never had I gone to this level in my own personal business to verify technology. I had a real human skull to work with to test different products if they work or not. Anything for science, right? One of the companies that I've been working with sent me an ethically sourced human skull to test whether or not red light devices actually were penetrating the bone to reach someone's brain in terms of stimulation. So I took it to my lab, set up a nice holding frame, and then started my experiments. The first red light therapy device that I tried was this Neuradiant helmet from Neuronic. I put the skull inside of it and turned it on and could literally see that almost no light was getting through the bone. And then I put the skull in a V-Lite product and turn on the V-Lite Duo 4 and the bottom of the skull literally lit up like a Christmas tree. And that was one of my first clues that not all red light therapy devices are created equal. But let me back up because this is definitely not the first time that I've tested intervention devices for brain health. I can remember back in the day, starting with direct electrical stimulation devices, there was this company called Think that used this module, which connected to sticky tape that went on your skin and delivered neurostimulation through electrical zaps. Honestly, although the Think was very interesting, I actually felt prickling on my skin, it was a little bit painful, and even the neurostimulation from it didn't really chill me out at all. If anything, it sort of either made me dizzy and a little overstimulated or feeling intoxicated. And the worst of it was that all that electrical stimulation on your skin disrupted any measurement processes that you could try to use with EEG. Like if I was trying to measure its effects on my brain using the Muse headband, for example. And there was another company called Halo, Halo Neuroscience, if you remember this one, that also delivered electrical stimulation through these little nodes. But that one was mostly designed to stimulate your motor cortex to help with physical performance. There was some early inklings that they were going to try to improve mental performance through their stimulation as well. Never really panned out. And eventually the company stopped selling devices. A little later on, I started working with low intensity transmagnetic stimulation. So this is NeoRhythm. It sets up a relatively weak magnetic field that pulses at different frequencies. And I really did find it to actually change my mental state. But the problem was, is that it was global brain modulation. It really wasn't focused on specific regions. So you would just move it back and forth and you know pick their different stimulation protocols. But it was really difficult to pin down what exactly it was doing. And even if it did have a neuromodulation component, it really wasn't doing anything like red light therapy proposal to do, which is increase circulation and do other things to promote brain longevity. So although the neuromodulation part of it was interesting, it was also difficult to decipher if it was actually affecting EEG signals as well. So there was a lot of questions on, is this neuromodulation from the weak magnetic field actually affecting the EEG sensors? And what exactly is it doing to the brain? Yes, it's chilling you out, maybe creating more alpha, but what is it doing beyond that? And I just felt like like the device was limited for those reasons. And finally, I started learning more and more about red light therapy, so I was actually really excited to try it. And that company, Neuronic, sent me their Neuradiant helmet. So I started using that, and to be honest, I put it on and I really didn't notice any difference. I would do the glow stimulation, for example, which is supposed to be their highest setting, and I was like, I don't really feel any different before and after. Their controller module is super bulky and analog, and they wanted me to go get a quantitative EEG scan from a clinic that was just in town, not even associated with them. 
And they said, well, maybe it's not stimulating the right areas. We want you to go get a quantitative EEG from some clinic in town. Hey, we found one on the map, basically Google Maps, one that's not associated with the company. And since I wasn't feeling a shift in my mood or my clarity and not really seeing any brainwave EEG changes, I was like, I don't know what to do with this thing. It costs $3,500. I'm not going to promote it on YouTube because I don't think it's really going to help my audience or my clients. So I ended up just shelving it for two years. It was bulky, inconvenient, and expensive. And subjectively, I really didn't feel any changes. I didn't know why at the time, but I would find out later what the issue was. So I was getting really frustrated trying to find devices that people could use for interventions to improve their brain health at home. And I just wasn't finding anything that really hit the mark. And then finally, I was doing a podcast with someone that I really respect. And they said, have you taken a look at V-Light? And I said, yeah, I kind of saw them on the internet. I tried red light therapy before. It really didn't do anything. So I haven't really followed up with that company. And he said that you need to check them out. And then randomly, I had a second person that I did a podcast with that I highly respected and was a neuroscientist himself. And he said, I tried V-Light at a conference and it totally created a state shift for me. It was amazing. So I had two different people telling me about this company, V-Light. So I'm like, okay, maybe I need to give red light therapy another chance. And the first time that I tried V-Light, I put on the Neuro Duo 4. I did the gamma stimulation and I totally felt a state change. And then I did the alpha stimulation and I felt calm and alert yet energized and grounded. And I was like, wow, this really actually makes me feel different just from the light stimulation. So I said, okay, I need to back up and do some more rigorous testing here. So I took before and after quantitative EEG measurements. And the first one I started with was with the gamma setting. And it absolutely increased the beta waves in my frontal lobe, which indicates increased focus, and it decreased theta in the same region, which means that it decreased drowsiness. I was like, wow, there is definitely something here. Let me try the other setting, which was alpha. And you can see on this brain map, my before and after alpha levels absolutely changed with the alpha stimulation. And it made me so excited because not only was this device make me feel different, it was having real world demonstrable changes on quantitative EEG. During that time, I also demonstrated with the Muse headband that it increased blood flow to my frontal lobe with the intranasal LED. So you've got blood flow changes, you've got brainwave changes. And when I'm reading the research on the V-Lite website, it is all in my own testing, linking up to exactly what was shown within their literature. And then I started using it with clients and I saw big changes with clients as well. People targeting sleep issues and getting better sleep because they're using it before bedtime. People using it in the morning for meditation experience and just feeling like energized and jazzed the whole day after they used it. All this momentum has been so dramatic over the last six months that I'm like, why didn't I see this before? What's going on with these red light therapy devices? And that's where the human skull came in is I started using it with these different red light therapy devices. And I realized that not all red light therapy devices are created equal. Some of them are simply too weak in terms of irradiance, the amount of power that they're putting out. Some of these things are just basically LEDs slapped onto a headset and the light never actually gets through the skull properly. As I said earlier, I actually got a spectrometer light measurement device Device and did my own measurements here in the lab. With the Neuronic Neuradiant 1070, I measured about three to five milliwatts per centimeter squared irradiance at about 1033 nanometers inside of the helmet without the skull. And then when I put the skull in the helmet and measured the amount of light that was getting through, it was at about 0.35 milliwatts per centimeter squared light power that was actually getting through the skull. But with the V-Light Neuro Pro 2, I measured 250 to 300 milliwatts per centimeter squared irradiance without the skull coming in at about 807 nanometers. And then when I added the skull in, it was still getting about 20 milliwatts per centimeter squared through the skull, 
which was about 100 times more light irradiance power getting through with the NeuroPro 2 as opposed to the Neuronic device. It's actually getting to the point for me where it's confusing how Neuronic is making claims about red light therapy when so little of the red light actually seems to be getting through the skull, especially in comparison to the V-Light products. What was really cool about the skull test is that I could use it with Neuronic and see that not much light was getting through at all. And then I put on the MIP810 entry-level device from V-Light. It shines beautifully through the nasal cavity and you can see how it would actually be stimulating the frontal lobe of your brain. I put on the Duo 4 and you can see it shining through the hard bone throughout the skull. And then you put on the NeuroPro 2, which has got 40% more power than the Duo 4, and you just see that light shining through the skull, and you can imagine that red light activating all the mitochondria in the cortex of your brain as it gets through the skull and improving circulation. And if you pulse it a certain way, actually inducing neuromodulation, which means that it can change the frequency of your brain waves to the desired effect, whether you want to calm down or get a great meditation session or get energized for the day. So I've been blown away by this testing. I finally feel like I have an interventional device that truly makes demonstrable brain changes, makes you feel different, and really can help a lot of people out there that are listening to this. I actually put together my findings so far in a red light therapy guide, which I'll put in the description below if you wanna check it out. And if you really want to dive deep on the training I'm doing with this device that combines tracking devices like the Muse headband or Neurable and combining it with red light therapy. I'm doing a five day challenge. I call it sharper every day. I'll put a link down there below. And we do also have an eight week training program. So if you're interested in that, let me know as well. If you want to see my blood flow testing video with V-Light, check out this video here and I'll see you on the other side.